Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, had group project. One group member used being a new mom as an excuse not to do her work. So I messed up her slides and passed them off as hers. She got in trouble. The second story, homeowner harassed construction workers. Complained to the city ensued, causing inconvenience and expenses. Karma struck when a 5G tower was installed in front of his house. The third story. Don't go out on leave during vacation bidding after trying to screw over a coworker. Today's first story is... Oh, you just had a baby and used that as an excuse to F up my grade? Group projects still happen at the college level. For me, it was once every term as each class required a team or group project to determine how we were able to work with a group. We were graded on that and evaluated. I got F'd twice before this and picked up the slack because GPA. Both times before and I was over it. The third group project comes up and it was looking like I was about to be F'd again, but by half of our group. There's six of us this time and two of the six shirked it the week before the start of the project already, with the third already making excuses because she just had a baby. So I convinced the rest of my group to leave the two other team members' names off of our project header and to give the third person another shot as she just had a baby. Turns out baby was actually eight months old and she was still adjusting. There were rules to this project. The first was that we could only communicate through the public forum within the class. So the professor could see that all group members were participating and all members had access to the forum. We had to elect a person, team leader, to do final editing and turn in the final project and we had to turn in a form with our own personal recommendations for grades for the other members of our group, of which we had to each turn in ourselves. We were given our group members' names in the actual project a week prior to give us extra time to get it done and to communicate within the forum and assign slides. Well, after that first week of initial setup and passing out slide assignments within the group, we realized what I've already stated. Two of the six of us were out, and the third was wishy-washy at best. I opted to do an extra set of slides as well as team leader, we decided to utilize Google Docs, technically not against the rules because all members had access, and get our stuff done together, offer help and all that. Our elected team leader sent an invite to all six members, and four of the six are there, including postpartum. We exchanged phone numbers to communicate via mass text, and we were all set to start. We decided to give each member four days to complete their slides and then the next two, to let team leader edit and format so that they're all the same font, background, etc. Four days pass and three of us posted our slides within the public forum, so team leader and the professor had access to our slides. Team leader for editing. After a day, team leader was overwhelmed with the editing and formatting, which we understood as there were 20 plus slides, so we decided to work together and all logged into Google Docs to get it done. But someone was missing. Postpartum, our wishy-washy teammate wasn't there. We each spent the next hour editing and all that, while calling postpartum and texting her to get her to log into Google Docs to help. Finally, postpartum logged into Google Docs with us to format all of our slides and suchity such. But after about 30 minutes, throughout little sidebar chat, we realized she wasn't actually doing anything. As you know, in Google Docs, you can see where each person is, which slide they're on, and what they're changing or adjusting. We sat there and watched and she changed the font a couple of times, changed the color of the font a couple of times, and then just stayed on that slide doing nothing. We realized what was happening. We're about to be effed again. So we prompted her to action. We asked her through chat to add her slides in so we could format those too. That's when the excuses came. I don't know how to do it. I must have mislabeled my file because I can't find them blah blah blah. So we all said okay. Well since all the others are done and we just need yours, why don't you just add them by the end of tonight? And Dr. Jane Kill will format them in the morning. And team leader will edit for any misspelling mistakes and turn it in. Postpartum agreed to text when her slides were added to our Google Doc. The next day comes and no one has gotten a text. So we called postpartum. No answer, no return texts. We scramble and decide that we would each take one slide from her required five slides, and whoever finished first would move on to a second slide, and same with who finished second. Well, I finished first and then second, and ended up doing three of her five slides. I was peeved. I have kids too. I have other obligations that needed my attention, and I had to adjust, just like the other two women on our team. But this lady was milking the baby angle. So I decided to remind the other women on the team that we're graded 80% of our grade on our slides and 10% on the project as a whole, meaning we had to hit the amount of slides required and 10% based off the other teammates grading us. So then I decided to let it slip that postpartum wasn't exactly a new mom, 
but a mother of a nearly one-year-old. Aghast at this new info, we decided to let Postpartum know we opted to do her slides for her, to help her out like we did, with the other two teammates who effed us. Also that because she just had a baby, we would add her name to the project cover page. She was happy, needless to say, because she was getting her slides done and didn't have to do SH. After we finished her slides, but before we were left Google Docs, we text her to go look at the slides and make sure she was okay with them, and to let us know if she was good with them. Remember, we could see who was logged on and where they were working in the doc. She never logged in. She never went over her slides. Less than two minutes later, she said they were great and thanked us for helping her out, and tried to relate to us on a maternal level. So now that she approved her slides, I went in and changed her slides. The font to different fonts from slide to slide and even bullet point to bullet point, including Comic Sans. I used different colors of font throughout the slides, purposefully misspelled a lot of the medical terms, and then copied and pasted bullet points off a few of our other slides. Left the font and colors the same from the copied slides, to show that she obviously copied and pasted from our slides, then added her name to the cover. The professor knew from the public forum who was assigned which set of slides, so she knew who these slides belonged to. Her slides were all over the place. She couldn't blame us either because she went on the class forum saying her slides were emailed to team leader, but she also never posted her actual slides to the class forum. Needless to say, she got called out and given a talking to. Our professor was nice and opted to talk to her instead of turn her in for plagiarizing and was given a barely passing grade for her slides, a zero from us. As we continued to post on our forum where the teacher could see about postpartum being late on turning in her slides, leaving us unable to edit and a lot of back and forth showing our many attempts to include her and offer help. She texted me because apparently she related to me the most, asking what happened to her slides. I told her she saw what was turned in and approved them. She was only given a full score on the 10% that counted for amount of slides. Needless to say, we didn't see her in any of our Psych 200 classes in any of the following terms. Don't F with my grades and use just having a baby as an excuse. Edit. Just for anyone thinking I'm a heartless bee and that being a parent is so overwhelming that it's okay you screw people over. I too was going through things, but I made and paid for this commitment to school, and nothing short of being in a coma would have stopped me from finishing this group project, if not for me but for the other people in my group. Edit 2. Just an FYI, I was going through my own SH, of which I can't say because then I'd out myself. Trust me though, everything that could shake your life up I was going through. The pressure of group projects in college can be overwhelming, especially when some members do not contribute their fair share. OP finds themselves in this exact situation, with two members shirking responsibilities, and a third, a new mother, being unreliable. Sure, having a baby can be tough, but using that as an excuse to slack off and not do your part in a group project is just low. Props to the rest of the group for taking matters into their own hands and getting the job done, despite Postpartum's lack of contribution. But hey, at least Postpartum learned her lesson, hopefully, and won't be pulling this crap again in the future. Maybe her teammates doing her work for her will actually inspire her to step up and contribute next time. The next story is... Homeowner got what was coming to him after daily harassment. I worked an engineering and construction job last year for a home builder and we had to deal with a bunch of 5G anti-vaxxer health nuts moving into one of our neighborhoods. Constantly complaints about the construction, the noise, the debris, which made no sense because they chose to move into the neighborhood before construction was completed. One man in particular would harass us daily, complaining about the streetlights being too bright. They weren't, and complaining about a generator we had running about a block away from him to power the site temporarily until we had the infrastructure in. The complaints ranged from the generator was damaging his hearing, thing was almost completely silent, or that the fumes from the generator were coming into his house and causing him and his kids to have stunted development. They would come up with stuff that made little to no sense. It escalated to the point where he got the city and the mayor involved, and we got sued. So we gave in to his requests and moved the generator to an inconvenient location, and had to take the time and money to rewire to be able to power the areas needed. This was including important stuff like the streetlights. We had to leave off for a couple nights until the move was complete, and you guessed it, he would call to complain. The nerve of this man. So here comes the revenge. We received an order from the city to install a 5G tower on site to improve cellular connection, because the area we were in had pretty bad service. Since my team and I were in charge of creating the plans to install the infrastructure, guess where we all simultaneously agreed to put the tower? Right smack dab in front of the angry man's house. We thought this was incredibly hilarious and couldn't stop laughing every time he would call freaking out, while the tower was being constructed. Got to the point he tried to file another lawsuit got laughed away, and within a week he never heard from them again. Moved out faster than the wind. He should have spent more time researching the effects of living near a construction site before he moved in, instead of relying on conspiracy theories. 
But let's talk about the best part of this story, the 5G tower. It's like the universe said, oh, you don't like a little construction noise? Well, how about a big ugly tower in your front yard? I bet that guy was losing his mind every day watching that thing go up. And then to top it all off, he tried to file another lawsuit and got laughed away. It's almost like the universe was saying, you had your chance to be reasonable, but you blew it. Lesson learned, folks. Don't mess with construction workers. They know how to build revenge towers. The last story is, Think you're petty by taking my birthday off? If I won't give you Father's Day? Honestly, I'm the queen of petty. So let me preface this by saying I work in a call center. We got four weeks of paid vacation and we go through bids for vacation days starting in November for the following year. Bidding is based off of seniority, which I'm fine with, but sometimes it can suck. In my particular role, it can be pretty awful because we only have four people for our role, so only one person can be scheduled off a day. I have this coworker, let's call him Steve. Well, Steve has more seniority than me, so since we work the same day, he gets first dibs. So when our bidding started, I already expected him to have the week of Christmas off, which is pretty usual for him, so no big. I approached him one day just to ask if he was planning on taking a certain day of my birthday, and he said no, because it's not during the usual week he takes off. So I start walking away and he had the audacity to call after me saying, actually, I'll let you have your birthday off if you let me have insert Hallmark holiday here. I'm going out of state that weekend. I was all sorts of annoyed. What kind of weak petty A BS did he think he was going to get away with here? I didn't say anything and continued to walk away. Well, Steve had been talking about trying to get a leave of absence for a while because he was too stressed. Somehow he convinced some doctor he legit needed time off. He didn't. He tries going out on leave every year towards the end of the year to get all the winter holidays off. And he left the week of Thanksgiving. Here's where the petty comes in. Now when Steve left we had only done one round of vacation bidding. There were still three rounds left for us to go through. And guess what you can't do when you're on a leave of absence? You can't bid on vacation. So while Steve was finding himself or whatever BS he fed everyone else, I was bidding for everything I knew he wanted. Week of Christmas? I got it. My birthday? Got it. Kids spring break week? Mine. Fourth of July week? Oh yeah. Father's Day? No out of state trip for you, Steve. And to top it all off, I took his birthday off just for good measure. He still has yet to bring it up, and I know he's seen what days are available and what days aren't. I just can't wait till he brings it up. Steve's leave of absence was actually a leave of petty, but kudos to OP for out pettying the petty king himself. Who knew vacation bidding could be such a cutthroat competition? Steve should have known better than to mess with someone who knows how to play the game. Maybe he'll learn to be a little less selfish next time, or maybe he'll just have to settle for a staycation. Either way, happy birthday to OP. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a nice day.